Hi, I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers and Components, Chapter 1, Design Methodologies. So when we're designing an embedded computing system, we have to look at several issues. Uh, one problem is how much hardware do we need? How much CPU do we need? You know, the more um, um, clock speed on a CPU, the higher the performance, the more it costs. Do we need to buy a high performance CPU? Or can we get away with a simpler one? Uh, how about memory? How much memory do we need to do the task? Thinking about the software level, um, how do we set our deadlines and how do we meet them? So um, if, if we have a deadline based on, on what the system needs to do, can we design clever software to, to, to run fast enough to do that? Or do we need to buy a faster CPU? Um, bigger cache, something like that. How do we minimize powered energy? Um, do we do redesign the software to reduce the memory accesses or do we use hardware techniques like turning off unnecessary logic? And of course we have to ask ourselves once we've designed something does it really work? And we have to, to ask that question at a bunch of different levels. Is the specification correct? That is, were we asked to design the, the right thing? Is this what the customer really wants? We have to ask, does the implementation meet the specification? And uh, beyond the traditional um, techniques for testing software, we have to think about those things that are unique to embedded computing. You know, How do we test for real-time characteristics? How do we know that it's going to meet our deadlines all the time? Uh, and uh, if we need to test on real data, which we often have to do since we're dealing with computers that talk to the real world, how do we manage that? And related to this question of does it work is, is how do we design and debug the system? You know, how do we know what's going on in the system? How do we observe it? How do we set bits? How do we change things in order to debug problems? And what's our development platform? Are we going to do all our work um, on a host PC? Are we going to put the compiler on our system? There's all sorts of tools questions. So a design methodology is a procedure for designing the system. You may also hear the, the term design flow or workflow. Uh, a methodology is important to make sure that you didn't under, uh, skip any steps. Uh, in some system development, uh, you also need to keep track of what you do so that other people can see that you designed it properly. That may be your boss, that may be certification agencies. Right? So we have a lot of different tools. Um, CAD tools that you use in hardware are, are design tools. Compilers and software engineering tools are design tools. So we can use these tools to um, automate a particular step like compiling a particular program. We can also use them to automate procedures. Uh, make you know, uh, is a simple example of automating not just one step but a sequence of steps. And some of these tools will help generate documentation so that we know that we did certain things. So we talked about design goals. We have uh, performance goals that are not just overall average speed, but hard real-time, soft real-time deadlines. We have to uh, uh, meet our functionality and user interface goals. We may have to worry about manufacturing cost, power and energy consumption, as well as other things like physical size, um, design, uh, product design characteristics, and so forth. So we often divide um, design into um, several levels of abstraction. Let's move from the top down. So requirements is used in somewhat different ways by different people, uh, but I use it as a more informal description of what the system's supposed to do. So this is something that's easier for the customer to relate to. It may be, uh, may be generated by a marketing team. It says what the system needs to do, but in relatively simple terms. A specification is a little more precise, a little more detailed, um, and it's something that you can hand off the design to the design team and they know what you're talking about. Right? But it's important to remember that a specification is not an architecture. Okay? You don't want the specification to, to say too much about how you're going to build the system. You need to say 
what the system is supposed to do, how, um, and it, it's performance, it's power consumption, but not the details of the design. The architecture is a high-level design for the entire system. It's the major pieces and how they fit together. Then we have to design a bunch of components that fit together um, in the architecture. And then we have to take those components, put them together, and do the final checks to make sure that everything works. Okay. So we often talk about both top-down and bottom-up design. And that's relative to this diagram here. So top means, top down means going from the top and working your way to lower levels of abstraction. Bottom up means starting at a low level of abstraction like a component and working your way up. Okay. So in reality, you tend to use both techniques. Top down design um, helps to make sure that you've met all the different um, requirements and specifications. Bottom-up design helps you evaluate cost better. Um, if you care about how fast something runs, how much memory it takes, how much energy it consumes, if you don't know anything about the implementation, it can be hard to estimate that. So in reality, we often do uh, a mixture of top-down design, refining the, the, the design to give it more detail, and then filling in some of the um, implementation characteristics with bottom-up design. Um, but at each level, we need to get down um, to a, a more detailed level of abstraction, and that's called stepwise refinement. refinement. We take our design uh, at the state it's in, we analyze it to determine what we need to do, and then we add detail to the design to get it down to the next level of abstraction. So let's go through these steps. Requirements, as we said, are plain language description um, of what the user wants and expects to get. You can uh, create these requirements in several different ways. You can talk to customers. You can talk to the marketing people who talk to customers who may be able to give you a broader uh, sense of what different customers need. Um, it's also useful sometimes to build a simple prototype and hand it to customers. Sometimes making something concrete, um, if you can do it simply, um, helps people give you good feedback. Okay. So we talk about functional and non-functional requirements. Functional requirements are um, input-output relationships, and non-functional requirements are basically everything else. Uh, real-time requirements, size, weight, energy consumption, reliability, and so forth. Okay, so design methodologies help us manage the design process, and we can use both top-down and bottom-up techniques.